Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do a recommendation video of horror and thriller books that involve coming of age narratives. This has been one of my most requested videos, especially among my patrons. They've been asking for this for way too long and it's about time that I finally did it. I'll be honest, I was hesitant to put this list together because for a long time, I didn't really think I liked coming of age stories and that's because I have tried reading some of the really iconic classic ones in the genres and I don't always like them. However, when I started to put together this list, I realized that I do like some, they just happen to be a little bit more underhyped. So hopefully you will find something on this list that you haven't yet read and it can give you some recommendations for yourself. And for those of you like myself that didn't necessarily know what it actually meant to be a coming of age story, typically it involves an older person looking back at a point in their childhood or adolescence. Typically there is some kind of event or situation that causes them to lose their innocence, hence forcing them to come of age or become an adult, sometimes sooner than they would like. These books also involve a lot of nostalgia, so typically they're looking back with a lot of fondness on a particular decade. And and these books are not considered to be YA because again, you have an older person telling the story of their youth. So it's not someone who is a young adult in their present day, if that makes sense. And these stories also tend to coincide with the classic trope of kids fighting evil. So in some of these stories, but not all of them, you're gonna have a group of kids. And with that, you're gonna get a focus on childhood friendships. And I have definitely come to appreciate this genre quite a bit. The books I'm gonna be including here are gonna be a combination of horror and thrillers. Some of these books are pretty light on those elements and I'll mention that as we go along, but if you enjoy coming of age stories, I definitely hope you stick around and let's get started. First, let's start with a personal favorite of mine and that is December Park by Ronald Malfi. This follows a town where there are young people that appear to be going missing. There is a rumor that there might be some man that they call the Pied Piper that is stealing all the children away, but but it's a little bit more of a myth until right at the beginning of the book, a young teenage girl is found murdered. And so now they're thinking that it's not just kids running away, but actually possibly there is a serial killer on the loose. The story is told primarily from the perspective of a young teenage boy. This book I should mention is set in the 90s, which is my personal childhood, so I very much connected with those aspects. But it follows him along with his friends, and because his father is actually a police officer, he has a little bit of an inside scoop into the mystery, and so it is him and his friends going around, and they decide to take matters into their own hands and decide to track down what is happening to these children. They have a solid group of friends, but there is also a new boy that comes into town and they make friends with him, even though he's a little bit weird, a little bit of an outsider. I like to recommend this book because I feel like it really follows a lot of the classic tropes of the coming of age narrative. You have the group of friends coming together. There's a lot of focus on, again, the nostalgia for the 90s, but it's not overdone. And despite following so many of these tropes, this book felt fresh and interesting and it did not feel tired whatsoever. I find those tropes to be very comforting to read about and this book was very endearing. You get a lot of focus on the challenges of the different characters, trying to fit in, find your place, and I thought that the mystery itself was actually fairly compelling. I thought it was gonna be more obvious, but the ending definitely did surprise me. I will say that this one is more of a mystery thriller. There really isn't a supernatural aspect to it, and it's much more toned down. So if you enjoy the coming of age narrative, but you're not really looking for something dark and gruesome, this is an excellent one to try out. Again, one of my absolute favorites. I would love more people to be reading it because to me, it feels a little bit under hype because despite me constantly talking about it on my channel, I don't see as many other people picking it up, so I'd really like to change that. Next, I want to recommend A Foster Home and Flies by Chad Lutsky. This is a novella that follows a young boy that comes home to find out that his alcoholic mother is dead. He, of course, is very upset by this, but in a weird childhood way, he's also very upset by the fact that he realizes that he has to go into a foster home because he has no other relatives to take care of him. And he is particularly upset because there is a spelling bee coming up that he has been preparing for for weeks and weeks. And he 
knows that he is not going to be able to stay at his school. So he makes the decision to actually not tell anyone what is happening at home. And so I believe he has to spend several days in his home with his dead mother in order to get to the day of the spelling bee. And from the synopsis, you might expect this book to be very grisly and gruesome, but I'll say that Chad Lutsky handles those strange elements in a very poetic and subtle way, so it's really not overdone. While I'm calling this a horror novella, I'll say it's very light on the horror elements and instead very heavy on the coming of age story. In this case, it is more about an isolated boy. He really is, for the most part, by himself. And again, it is about how he has lost his innocence through this event and is forced into an adulthood that he really is not ready for and he is basically trying to hang on to the last fragments of his childhood through the spelling bee. So as always is the case with Chad Lutsky's work, this one is highly emotional with some incredible character work. While it is novella, it has some great development in just a few pages, and I just highly recommend all of his work, but in this case, if you want a coming-of-age narrative, this is definitely the one to start with. Going back to full-length novels, I want to recommend another of my favorites, and that is Midnight Rain by James Newman and this follows a boy who is out on his bike and goes to his clubhouse and in the middle of the night he sees a terrible act and basically sees the death and murder of a young woman in his community. He is hesitant to go to the police because of what he saw and the only person he feels he can confide in is his older brother who is going away and basically this book is told over multiple weeks during August when he is trying to come to terms with what he saw and then decide what to do about it and the consequences that follow. Now this book is set in the 1970s and while this is before my time the author does an amazing job of the nostalgia. Compared to say December Park this one is much darker. It definitely has some gruesome moments, some content warnings for sexual and physical abuse so keep that in mind. It is not over the top but it's definitely there and this book is very much focused on the element of loss of innocence because the character gets to see the repercussions of his actions and also his inactions. And I just think that this one just creates that feeling of the coming of age narrative that I was looking for at the time that I read it and it did so very well. I think that the characters are pretty straightforward. You kind of know that the bad guys are bad and it's not as unpredictable as some of the other thrillers I'm going to mention here. So you kind of know where it's going but at the same time I'll say that the ending was incredibly satisfying and very exciting and I thought this one was just well paced, well plotted and again this is one I would love to see more people picking up. I think it's brilliant. It's debut which is insane because it is so well put together and if you can't tell I highly recommend it. Now I typically have a personal rule when I put together these recommendation lists that I only allow myself to mention an author once but I'm going to break my own rule here because I really want to include another book by James Newman and that is In the Scrape which is again by James Newman but also co-authored by Mark Sleeslin. This is a horror slash thriller novella so it is shorter it follows two young boys who are brothers and they are living with their abusive father and they decide to hatch a plan to run away to California to be with their mother and the story is told in two parts. The first section is them again living the day-to-day -day life with their abusive father and then the second part is when they actually go and attempt their escape. This might sound strange to say but I really enjoy reading stories that involve abusive parents and I thought that this book was very emotional. The character development was phenomenal. Again, especially considering the few number of pages in this story, I became very attached to the brothers and found them to be very realistic. You really felt that camaraderie between the two of them. And towards the second part of the book, this one switches into much more of a fast-paced thriller. So if you want a lot of action, adventure, and just those exciting parts of not knowing what is going to happen, are they going to get out? 
and so forth. There are some really good twists and turns and I definitely do recommend this one. Again, I feel like not enough people are reading this one and it's well worth checking out for yourself. Now I'm gonna lean into my Canadian roots and recommend you a book called Dust by Arthur Slade. This is set in the Canadian prairies during the Great Depression. In this area, there are a lot of farmers and of course, on top of the depression, there was also a drought that made everything worse because the crops were failing. At the beginning of the story, his younger brother disappears. And while of course his parents are upset by this, they eventually stop looking for him, but the brother does not give up on his younger sibling. And the story involves him trying to track him down. At the same time, there is a man that comes into town and he's a bit of a rain man. He basically is trying to convince the people to believe in him and that supposedly he's gonna create some kind of machine that is going to bring the rain down and save their crops. So this story very much involves a creepy man from the outside that this young boy does not trust. And again, the loss of innocence as his young brother has disappeared. This book definitely bends a lot of genres so while it is a bit of a coming-of-age horror novel it definitely has that line of both historical fiction but also that possibility of something supernatural going on and I'll very much leave it to you to experience where the story goes but this one is just full of emotion, full of mystery, and is definitely creepy. I found it to be quite creepy. This book is often mislabeled as young adult, but for my personal preferences and feelings, I really felt that it better described itself as coming of age because it really does have all ages appeal. And in fact, I think will appeal most to adults who will again get the most out of this story. So highly recommend it. A piece of Canadian lit that is definitely gonna be a classic as time goes along and we'd love more people to try it for themselves. Finally, I wanna end this video by recommending The Ghost Tree by Christina Henry. This is centered in a town where there was a grisly murder and the remains of some teenage girls were found in someone's yard. The story is told of from multiple perspectives perspectives, but primarily it focuses on two young teenage girls. They have been best friends forever. However, they are now getting older and are starting to grow apart. One is becoming more focused on boys and makeup and clothes, while the other one is more hanging on to their childhood. And so on top of this mystery, there is a heavy focus on that coming of age narrative. And what I like about this one, if you didn't notice with every other book I recommended here, is that this one actually focuses on girls, which is something I really appreciate. I find in general coming of age stories are always about boys and I found this one just very refreshing and of course as a woman myself I definitely related to a lot of aspects. So this book does of course as I mentioned deal with the breaking up of female friendships which for those of us who have gone through it I think that the power and strength of those first friendships are so strong and when they do change in those teenage years it can be so devastating and i think that the author really understood and captured that well and then it also deals with the more feminine side of coming of age so dealing with getting your first period and again getting interested in makeup and boys and how that changes you and i just really like those aspects on top of this it's just plain a good supernatural mystery there's definitely some creepy things happening and i just enjoyed where the story went it has some good witchy elements and i think it just has a lot of appeal for a lot of readers including male readers i think you'll enjoy this one as well and i just love seeing a female focused coming of age story and i've been looking for one for quite a while and this one finally fit the bill so that is it for this video let me know down below if you're planning on picking up any of the books I mentioned here and also tell me what is your favorite coming of age story. I would love more recommendations and if it's a really popular one, that's okay too. I haven't read them all and I'm definitely looking to try more in the genre. I'd also love to hear if you have a really good female coming of age narrative because again, I feel like they're hard to find. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I read a lot of horror, thrillers, science fiction, and fantasy. And if you're already subscribed, you can help me out by leaving a comment, giving me a thumbs up, hitting that notification bell, or sharing this video around online, like on Reddit or Twitter, all of those good things. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.